I'd like to say to all of the young innovators, Black Lives Matter. could nonviolent action be used against ISIS? You Even can the be a of part of, of the biggest scientific, scientific discoveries of our time. In the next 30 years, the world's population is projected to reach 9 billion people. But the world's population is growing at a much faster pace than the world's food supply. The increasing scarcity of resources like land and water will make it far more difficult to answer the question, how exactly will we feed 9 billion mouths? More importantly, how can we grow nutritious and sustainable food that supports healthy and productive lives with far fewer resources available? Insects are among the most abundant and nutritious animals on the planet. Grown at a large scale, insects like grasshoppers, crickets, mealworms, and even cockroaches might be the answer to feeding 9 billion people. Insects offer us a protein for the future, one that is sustainable, nutritious, and above all, tastes delicious. Insects are sustainable because they're so efficient, and they're efficient because they're exothermic. This means that they don't undertake the complex and energy-intensive physiological processes that other animals, like cows or humans do, in order to regulate their body temperature. This allows them to convert whatever they eat onto mass on their bodies much more efficiently. In livestock rearing, and yes, we actually think of it as tiny, tiny livestock rearing, we refer to this as feed efficiency. Feed efficiency is a ratio of how much food an animal needs to consume in order to put on one pound of weight. Cows are among the most inefficient of the proteins, requiring 25 pounds of feed to produce one pound of beef. Crickets, on the other hand, only require two pounds of feed to produce one pound of cricket protein powder. Cows also require an astonishing 2,000 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. Crickets, they require only one gallon. Crickets and insects are also a remarkable source of nutrition. Crickets have more protein than beef jerky, chicken, salmon, and eggs. They have more iron than spinach and more calcium than milk. Mealworms are another popular type of edible insect. They have more protein than lean beef and more omega-3s than salmon. Insects also offer us these benefits while emitting far fewer greenhouse gas emissions than other animals. Industrial meat production currently accounts for 37% of the methane in our atmosphere. Methane is a huge contributor to climate change and to rising global temperatures. Cows are the biggest culprit of methane production, emitting 2 billion tons of methane into our atmosphere. Insect production releases less than 1% of the methane emissions of cattle production. A yet another compelling fact to support eating insects is that they require very little in terms of physical space. You can't stack cows on top of each other, but you can grow insects in enclosed spaces like a warehouse or a barn. Right now, forests are being cut down at an alarming rate. They're being converted into pastures for grazing cattle, or we're planting them with monoculture crops to grow grain to feed animals. 30% of the world's land is devoted to raising animals for meat. So growing insects in an enclosed vertical space can alleviate pressure on land resources that we currently devote to meat production. Insects can also be grown in places that livestock cannot. Many US-based edible insect farms are located in dense urban areas like Detroit or Los Angeles or San Francisco. As more and more humans move to cities, the need for accessible and nutritious food that can be grown on non-arable land will become increasingly important. Incorporated into a backyard farm or perhaps grown in an old abandoned warehouse, insects will change the way that we think about growing food in urban spaces. This is even more exciting when we consider that many insects are detrivores, which means that they consume dead plant matter or waste. For this reason, they can be reared on agricultural waste products or garden scraps. Insects can make closed-looped systems a reality, where we incorporate food waste into insect farming to create low-cost alternative sources of protein. So maybe I've managed to convince you that, yes, insects are sustainable, and yes, insects are nutritious. There still wouldn't be a compelling case to be made for insects if they didn't also taste good. 
Escamol, a type of ant egg, considered a delicacy in Mexico, tastes sort of like a bacon-flavored mushroom, I swear. Mealworms have this sort of nutty, crunchy consistency that reminds me of eating corn nuts. Crickets, people have told me, reminds them of eating dark toast. I've also had ants that are sweeter than honey, others that are more tart than lemons. Around the world, two billion people consume insects as part of their traditional diets precisely because they offer this delicious array of flavors. It's actually only really in the West that our cultural perceptions of deliciousness and disgust dismiss insects as a viable food. But the Western world is beginning to see the potential, both gastronomic and economic, of eating insects. Five years ago, there was only a handful of companies that were making insect-based products. Today, there are over 150 and counting. Early adopters of this movement see the writing on the wall, that as a species, we cannot continue consuming meat in the quantities or at the pace that we do, or we will rapidly deplete our world's limited resources. We need an alternative. We in the industry recognize the enormous potential of insects to completely revolutionize our food systems, but we're playing the long game. Right now, insects are a premium luxury product. At $40 a pound, cricket protein powder is used to make high-end products like chips, bars, and brownies. But at $40 a pound, it's a really difficult and expensive product to access. But insect protein powder has the potential to have a huge impact beyond the high-end power bar if we're able to make it price competitive with low-cost protein powders like whey, soy, and fish meal. At that price and at that scale, insects can be incorporated into every industry that relies on low-cost protein. It can be used to make animal feed, to reduce our dependence and the negative impacts of land and fertilizer runoff from corn and soy production. It can be used as a fish meal replacement, which will decrease the pressure on fish stocks, which are rapidly declining as we trawl the ocean floor to get fish to make fish meal to then feed to salmon and chicken. Insects can make sustainable meat a reality. As a complete and shelf-stable source of nutrition, insects can also be used to make hunger relief bars for areas that are suffering from drought and from famine. As we decrease the price and the stigma around insects, as consumers, we might also consider replacing our weekly steak with a cricket burger instead. But this vision is light years away. Right now, the industry remains in its infancy. There's a great need for innovation, for research, and for development. We need food scientists, farmers, and engineers to take on this edible insect cause. With more investment and human capital, we'll begin to see developments that will make insect farming at a large scale a reality. If we can achieve cost-effective, large-scale insect farming, insects will have their desired outcome. To create low-cost, delicious and nutritious food that can meet the demands of a growing global population while alleviating pressure on our planet's limited and natural resources. Thank you.